Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very, very much hope that this video finds you well and in very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. And today, if you don't mind, I would very much like to continue on with our journey, our discussions, our discoveries, and our explorations with respect to the recent releases made by the Criterion Collection during this year of 2022. Specifically, I'd like to focus on a work which might be found in this wonderful release from the Criterion Collection earlier this year. And this release is given the title overall as Three Films by Mai Zetterling, and is referring to the great filmmaker Mai Zetterling and three of her works on this multi-disc release. Again, this release is at spine number 1162. Today, I'd like to focus on one such work, and this is a work which is described as being from the year 1964. And again, it's from the filmmaker Mai Zetterling. And the name of the work is, and please pardon me for my poor pronunciation of the Swedish language. I hope you can forgive me. The name of the work is Elskande Por, or as it's known in English, Loving Couples. from the year 1964. And once again, please pardon me for my very poor pronunciation of the Swedish language. I hope you can forgive me. Uh, this is the work which is Elskande Por, or as it's known in English, Loving Couples. And uh, before we get any further, let me say that this is the first disc of a three-disc set. And again, just for purposes of today's video discussion, uh, my presentation uh, is such that I'm presenting the disc, putting it on this side of the inner plastic casing. And so you can see the title, which is, uh, which is decorating the, uh, the, the, this side of the disc. So this is the first disc, which is Loving Couples, uh, Ex Candepor from 1964. And this is the work which is uh, the screenplay by Mai Zetterling and David Hughes. And this is from uh, based upon uh, the works by Agnes von uh, Kersenkerna. And this is directed by uh, Mai Zetterling. And among its really brilliant cast, we have people like Harriet Anderson and Gunnar Lindblom and Gio Petre and others. Uh, this is the work once again loving couples. This is such a, a moving and provocative work from Mai Zetterling. Uh, if we were to try to focus on the plot or story structure of this, it is a really intricate story structure set around uh, uh, circa 1915. And uh, we have the, uh, the, the setup of three separate women in this uh, part of a, a hospital or clinic, a maternity ward, uh, because we understand that these uh, three women, these uh, one of the, the primary characters that we will come to know as the film progresses, uh, these women are expecting and they are about to give birth. And so they are here in this hospital setting. And as we come to know them, uh, each in uh, her own way, we get to know a little bit about where they come from and uh, their backgrounds from when they were young and to uh, growing up and uh, the various people that they meet, including uh, uh, emotional relationships, familial relationships, sexual relationships, uh, intimate relationships, etc. Uh, and also we get to see a little bit of their, or not a little bit, quite a, a, a substantial amount indeed of their say class background or financial background uh, that also makes up part of either how they view themselves internally or how the external world views them. And I, I phrase it in that way too because one of the aspects of the say uh, exploration and a dissection of character uh, as uh, in the hands of Mai Zetterling and others here in this great film Loving Couples is the notion or one of the notions being I would suggest the idea of how the characters are handling uh, the way in which the world around them, uh, again, circa 1915, how the world around them, especially in the, in the context of what might be called or what might be classified in some circles as being a type of rigid class structure, 
how the world around them perceives them and whether or not that external perception or perception from the outside affects their own self worth or self-reflection or self-introspection or uh, evaluation of oneself. So whether or not there is a an alignment or perhaps there is a, a disunity or disharmony, uh, disharmony between or lack of harmony between uh, how the external world perceives them or their understanding of how the external world perceives them versus how they perceive themselves. And so uh, that is one of, I think, the great sources of, say, dramatic, say, tension or uh, 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 the uh, uh, maybe the building blocks or, or the uh, foundational plane upon which my Zetterling and others uh, and through the performances of these great, great actors examine and further elaborate upon and uh, give us more insight into the emotional and psychological uh, state of these characters uh, going forward. And in that context, too, what we see is uh, there is also a sense of of, as I mentioned before, a type of class structure. And this class structure could be ones that uh, certain characters that we meet, either the primary or uh, uh, maybe secondary characters, uh, they either go along with or they maybe resist. And that resistance or that, say, uh, uh, counteraction is expressed also through moments of what one might call uh, expressions of, say, frustration or uh, uh, liberation or uh, elation or uh, maybe a sense of uh, confusion or a sense of uh, the unknown. Uh, but whatever the case may be, what my Zetterling and company do here is give us a sense, too, of who these characters are as individuals and whether or not there is some kind of uh, complacency or whether there is a type of resistance or somewhere in between or something other than the above, whatever the case may be, we are meeting these people as individuals uh, during a very important part of their lives, uh, namely uh, the point at which they are about to uh, give birth or maybe get ready to give birth uh, to, uh, uh, and also uh, link to that how the important parts of their lives that they perceive that brought them there, as well as uh, whether uh, there are other aspects of their own, say, self-examination or self reflection, uh, looking back on the past and uh, contemplating on the present, etc. How each of these characters, our three main characters, how it affects them and their possible choices going forward. So in that context, this is a very, very rich and very absorbing set of dramas because we are dealing with uh, these three separate characters. Now, uh, I mentioned class. And so what one of the uh, fascinating things here is how each of these characters does come. There's maybe what one might call a sense of either ornate or uh, indirect uh, a connection uh, between and among these characters through some form or another, again, through the lattice work of the society that we also see depicted, uh, again, circa 1915. Uh, however, we also see uh, very distinct ways in which each of these three characters comes from a different, say, uh, one might call station in life, or one might call, say, certain uh, class uh, structures uh, that, again, inform us of, say, uh, certain aspects of their background and uh, family and uh, familial connections, etc. So uh, we have one character who is uh, coming from a very uh, high, uh, a high class uh, or an upper class echelon, and then we have another character who uh, seems to have uh, had a sense of mobility from the upper classes to uh, the lower classes due to uh, something that has been revealed to us in the past about the family and the, and the patriarch. And then we have another character who is coming from the lower class uh, in terms of this rigid class structure. Now, that doesn't necessarily give us, uh, the film doesn't give us uh, any distinction in terms of any type of, of um, uh, morality check or any, uh, anything of the sort. On the contrary, and again, I want to emphasize this, my Zetterling and company focus on each of these characters as individuals. And indeed, their choices and their views of themselves may not always reflect, quote unquote, where their station is in this uh, uh, class structure that we are uh, uh, privy to as viewers of this film. And so this is also a very interesting way in which this uh, film shows us the push and pull between and among the characters and where they are in their lives now. What that also allows for is this way in which they explore uh, other facets of their uh, 
uh, of their characters and of their uh, maybe wants and desires. And one such facet or char characteristic that is on display is relationships. And so we see each of these characters, again, in various stations of life and the various relationships that they have. And sometimes they, there might be relationships that are, uh, quote unquote, maybe outside of the, uh, the social mores of the time mores of the time, or uh, there might be, uh, and or there might be some reflection of a sense of happiness or lack of satisfaction, either emotionally or spiritually, uh, that makes these characters or compels these characters or uh, uh, has these characters uh, purposefully make choices that lead them to uh, other possibilities of their lives and other explorations and other avenues of explorations. And so one of the ways this film uh, talks about that is the exploration of sexuality and uh, sexual intimacy. And uh, there are also aspects of this uh, where uh, there's also a type of self-discovery uh, that is uh, on display uh, with a number of these characters, as well as a recognition of maybe a sense of sadness or lack of satisfaction that may uh, compel characters to want to go and meet other people. And again, that meeting of other people might lead them outside of their uh, class station. It also might lead them outside of the quote-unquote traditional uh, conceptions of, of relationships in uh, traditional conceptions, and I use air quotes, uh, in, of uh, relationships in this uh, form of society. And thus leading to, uh, again, this idea of, of a further establishment of independence and liberation that might be totally outside the quote-unquote uh, structure that we see in place, this, uh, the, the system that we see in place. And so this is uh, also a very a type of uh, uh, a very fascinating look into the, uh, the lives and the ideals and the, uh, the hopes and dreams and wants and the, uh, maybe the disappointments and the, uh, the actual uh, human interactions and uh, reflections and indeed uh, the actual selves the self, the human self that is on display with each of these characters. And also, too, there is a sense of the, uh, the patriarchy and the matriarchy, and also the sense, too, of relationships between and among the sexes. And so uh, we have, uh, for example, uh, as exemplified in some of the uh, character arcs or subplots of this film, Loving Couples, we have uh, relationships between male characters and female characters, and how uh, this uh, might find some form or structure or even rigidity in, say, uh, some of the systems that we see on display here. So, uh, for example, uh, the, the way in which, say, uh, medicine and uh, medicinal treatment and uh, how this is uh, handled or how this also might uh, affect uh, the way that certain specific characters uh, uh, view themselves or maybe they might uh, 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 maybe uh, gain a sense of or maybe uh, uh, feel a sense of guilt or shame, whether that feeling of guilt or shame is indeed fair or not, be that becomes another point of discussion that this film, or watching this film, Loving Couples, I think, engenders. And so we have this uh, this notion here. And also, too, uh, in that vein, uh, we have to, uh, have to point out, too, that the supplements also indicate how in a lot of areas, especially in the 1960s, uh, a lot of areas or a lot of audiences might have found some of the scenes to be very direct and to be very, uh, for lack of a better phrase, quote unquote, shocking. And so there are some scenes of a very frank uh, sexuality or uh, concepts of sexuality, whether they are uh, uh, concepts that are discussed in terms of maybe uh, the, the notion of, of medical examinations, a gynecology, uh, and the like. I don't want to suggest that there's anything specifically shown per se, although, although there are some uh, moments of uh, very frank depictions of uh, human sexuality, but it's always done, and it's always done in a way that is very much telling of the characters. It's very much consistent and organic with the uh, the the, the, uh, the directory of the stories that we are seeing here, because again, uh, uh, the selves that we are focusing on with these characters and these three. Uh, primary characters in particular, the selves that we are talking about are the selves that uh, are very multi-linked. And these are very uh, flesh and blood, human, three-dimensional characters. And as we know with flesh and blood, human, three-dimensional characters, there's so much going on at once. The human, uh, human beings are very complex beings indeed. And so that complexity as reflected in these uh, character portraits shown in Loving Couples is brilliant. And part of that for some of these characters is indeed the, uh, the, not just the notion of, of uh, parenthood and the notion of, of birth 
and giving birth, but also uh, not just the notion and the concept, but the, but the actuality of this and what this means going forward and how, if at all, this will affect uh, the many choices uh, that uh, these characters and indeed uh, other characters in the context of the film uh, will confront and will face and will make. And also, not to mention the fact that we are also placing this in the context, as I say, of a type of, of uh, a rigid or a class or societal structure that is taking place within the context of circa 1915. So we have to remember uh, sort of national context and also global context, which is also uh, uh, seeping into the film's plot, as well as ramifications for how this, uh, this say, uh, historical-based context might still have meaning or resonance uh, for audiences of the present uh, 1960s, and indeed, I dare say, audiences in 2022. Uh, this has a strong resonance and an echo. Uh, and indeed, uh, when we're talking about the balance and shifts of time and the possibility of, of uh, say, discussions uh, that traverse time and space, that's another point that I want to bring up, which is the film handles time and space in a way that is very very skilled indeed. Not only are you talking about multiple stories, uh, multiple main characters in a manner of speaking that may intersect, intersect or diverge as the case may be or as the plots may uh, dictate, but also we have ways in which these characters are thinking back or looking back or considering back uh, in time to their lives growing up, to the people that they've met, also now in the present. And the relationships and the situations and the feelings that they have in the present and how things in the past may or may not have connections with things in the present. Therefore, the film uses that or, or takes that as a springboard by which it, in terms of a cinematic style, jumps uh, in these marvelous uh, cinematically and poetic uh, ways, jumps back and forth in time. It never feels confusing. It always feels fluid. It always feels very... Um, organic and also feels very natural and it has a flow to it almost like a stream of uh, uh, in terms of a stream of consciousness type of flow uh, it is that uh, richly uh, and closely linked with what one might call the emotional or psychological portraits of the characters that we are meeting this is a very a brilliant way of both presenting the objective space, the external space, and also the historical context, etc., as well as the subjective internal space of the characters. And that is a, a, a fine, fine combination. Uh, indeed, in the cinematic context, what a film this is! Uh, again, I was, I, I was just, I was stunned. I was overwhelmed. I was enthralled. I was wanting to know more about these characters. And uh, getting to know them and and uh, seeing the uh, 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 and uh, seeing them in a three dimension three dimensional way, and maybe not necessarily being able, I admit, to understand everything in terms of uh, why certain choices were made uh, here there in terms of the characters themselves, but. Uh, it is uh, the fact of, of this showing and this uh, presenting to us and this idea of, of a, a, uh, a rich tapestry that is wholly, wholly, wholly respectful of the characters and what it is and who it is that they are as human beings. This is the brilliance. Uh, a, this is the brilliant point, one of many brilliant points of this uh, amazing work. And once again, this is a work which is El Scande Por, or as it's known in English, Loving Couples. The Criterion Collection has released this film, Loving Couples, again, as part of this overall set, which is three films by Mai Zetterling, again, in this Blu-ray edition. And according to the materials, these are purported to be based on new 2K digital restorations with Unkmer's Monroe soundtracks. And so, uh, I've already taken the liberty of removing the booklet, the great staple booklet uh, from this uh, prior to the start of uh, recording this video discussion. Uh, but let me read from uh, one of the pages here, again on page 32. It says about the restorations, loving couples, night games, and the girls are presented in their original aspect ratio of 1.66 to 1. These 2K digital restorations were undertaken by SF Studios and the Swedish Film Institute from the 35 millimeter original camera negatives. The original Monaro soundtracks were remastered from the 35 millimeter optical soundtrack positives. So uh, once again, uh, let me say that my experience with these films is either very, very limited or introductory. And so I have never had the opportunity, therefore, to see these films in the theater projected in the past, etc. So my uh, my experience will uh, and uh, my my 
comments on the presentation, uh, I admit, are very, very limited indeed. That being said, this is a very overwhelming experience. I was thoroughly engaged and I could see the, the, the crispness and I could feel the sounds and uh, there, there are moments where uh, certain shots outdoors and indoor scenes uh, were done in a way that was so, it felt so um, faithful and it felt uh, fresh and alive. And so I feel that way about this work and its presentation as well as the other works themselves. So I am thoroughly engaged and thoroughly uh, engrossed and uh, quite uh, quite taken indeed uh, with this presentation. So uh, I'm very, very happy to, to be able to, uh, uh, to experience it in this way. So uh, that is, again, my uh, admittedly very limited take on the presentation, both the look and the sound. But now let me turn to uh, the first disc's supplements, because as we know, this is the first disc, Blu-ray disc number one, of a three disc set and this blu-ray disc number one has the film loving couples and also it has a number of supplements that are uh, that could be said to be linked to uh, this film although as we get into it i think uh, we can also find that these supplements can be said to be linked to uh, other aspects of the film and also my zetterling overall as well so uh, what are these supplements that we have we have two the first is called uh, meeting my zetterling and uh, it's described as being from 19, this, this uh, work is being from 1996, and it's also described as being a, uh, a work that is about meeting and talking with Mai Zetterling in 1984. And this is overall 10 minutes of meeting Mai Zetterling. And she, here she is sitting uh, at her home uh, in this uh, lovely setting. It's a beautiful day. And she is uh, talking about certain aspects. Uh, for instance, she does talk about a little bit at the start about the film The Girls, uh, which is another film which is on actually the third Blu-ray disc of, uh, of this set. And so that starts uh, the conversation or it starts this, this work supplement with some comments about the girls and and uh, I don't want to get too much into detail let's save those details a little bit for when we get into a discussion of the girls but let me say that this is also a way in which she is uh, telling us too about uh, how uh, how her films were um uh, how what the response was from the critics uh, with some of her films, such as The Girls. And she mentions here the anecdote about how uh, the male critics panned the film and there was uh, one singular positive review. Uh, but uh, this was uh, her way then to suggest to us that in terms of the financial success or failure of the film The Girls, it was a flop in her words. It was a flop. And so it does. she does acknowledge too that it did have an effect on her ability to be able to make other films after this in the late 1960s. Uh, this is a detail that will also be mentioned in some of the other supplements, including the second one on this disc, by the way. So uh, this is a very uh, important thing to keep in mind, not just the films themselves, but also the critical reaction to them at the time and how that may or may not have had an effect on uh, the ability for Mai Zetterling to say, uh, be able to raise the funding or finances to be able to pursue some of the other projects that she really wanted to pursue. Uh, so, uh, but that's an anecdote that opens this uh, very fascinating anecdote. Again, it's an indication to of how savvy she is, uh, and how uh, how uh, steadfast uh, she is as well. And uh, she also mentions here, and I think elsewhere too, about how uh, she uh, really takes reviews very seriously. And not just the positive reviews, not just the successes, but also she takes the negative reviews very seriously. And, uh, you know, uh, success and failure go hand in hand, she mentions somewhere. Uh, and, uh, she mentions in another supplement. And so I think this is a really important thing as well. She is, uh, she is, I think, very honest in terms of of uh, assessing how the uh, how the audiences may have reacted and responded to her works at the time. Uh, but that is in no way uh, suggesting a sense of how she might be uh, yielding in terms of her philosophy in, in, uh, uh, in her films that she made, such as the films that are included in the set. On the contrary, uh, one can sense a, uh, a sense of true, true confidence in the films that she has made. And she is so lovely in terms of her confidence and in terms of her, her uh, philosophy that is uh, steadfast and unchanging, which is so admirable and so, so awesome. Uh, and we get that sense from the out very outset. So uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, and then also then it goes into uh, her 
a little bit of her background in terms of, of uh, her career as an actor, uh, in terms of her training, uh, stage training, uh, the Royal Dramatic Theatre, and also how she uh, found uh, this type of success very early on in her life at a young age, as she describes it. But she also wanted uh, to uh, have a sense of freedom. She wanted to have a sense of adventure and travel. And so uh, uh, she then w uh, decided to go to England. And so uh, then she was able to uh, find a career as an actor uh, in England. Uh, and then also this meant to uh, finding an, uh, an actor in, in terms of films in England and also in Hollywood for a little bit uh, during her uh, career as an actor as a, a stage and now a screen actor, a, a, a movie actor. But uh, she also had the feeling or desire uh, to want to be a filmmaker, to be a director. And uh, there's a discussion here uh, and also elsewhere about how uh, her early film efforts were as uh, documentaries, uh, BBC documentaries. Uh, and this is very fascinating. And uh, she also mentions too that she had her plan. She calls it her five-year plan as to how she wanted to find a certain trajectory in terms of her career as a filmmaker. And part of that five-year plan she describes is trying to make these documentaries. And then also we get a little sense of of the short, uh, the, sh the short fictional work called the War Games, uh, and then she mentions how now that was uh, setting the stage for her wanting to make her first feature film, her feature film debut, and uh, this coincided with her uh, talking about um, Agnes von uh, Kirchenscherna and the works that uh, of uh, Agnes von Kirchenscherna that ended up becoming the basis for the story Loving Couples, and. Uh, this is uh, very, very fascinating stuff indeed because, uh, again, we this is the mentioning of Agnes von Kirchenschöne and we should note here that there's a type of, of kinship, uh, maybe spiritual kinship between Agnes von Kirchenschöne and uh, Mai Zetterling that is actually recognized uh, in another supplement uh, we'll talk about uh, in um, uh, when we talk about uh, some of the other films in this uh, set. But uh, this uh, this also gives her the opportunity to explain uh, or her take on Agnes von Kirchenschöner and also the, the quote-unquote controversial nature of her works uh, in terms of depictions of, say, uh, of uh, sexuality and uh, independence of, uh, and a type of uh, viewpoint from a, you know, what might be described as a type of feminist perspective and how this uh, take or these takes uh, were adapted or adopted in the context of the film of My Zetterling, Loving Couples. And so uh, very, very fascinating indeed. And also she mentions to uh, more things about critical responses. And uh, there she mentions one anecdote about a critical response that she had received about, uh, and it was a, a somewhat of a condescending, somewhat, it was quite a condescending remark about how uh, she recalled about a critic or, or a reviewer had mentioned that uh, My Zetterling directs like a man, end quote. And so, um, and I, she elaborates on this, or she uh, she maybe uh, uh, considers or ponders this, and she uh, she uh, surmises that uh, perhaps the perception of her as an actor, as a as in her words, a type of sexy blonde, uh, in a number of her very memorable roles as an actor, uh, this might have been the image that a lot of the people in the industry, again according to her perception, might have had. But then when she shows her prowess her brilliant artistic prowess and her gifts, her genius as a director, uh, then uh, the, the perceptions seem to shift. And so uh, maybe there is a, a type of, of way in which uh, uh, maybe this type of uh, perceptions or perhaps, um, uh, to borrow a phrase elsewhere, like this male gaze aspect of the industry may have uh, uh, been the reason why uh, the comment was made in this manner. So but in any event, this also allows her for the opportunity to go into this idea of how she doesn't necessarily uh, maybe that while she she doesn't necessarily subscribe to the phrase or the description of female director or women filmmaker. The this is something that she doesn't subscribe to necessarily. Rather, she discusses how she wants to make films about the t the subjects that she wants to make them. 
And that might be, for instance, about certain aspects of uh, certain female characters that we meet, like in say, loving couples or elsewhere. That also might have to do with explorations and considerations and and uh, discussions, uh, sometimes even frank discussions about sexuality. But that is a part of the uh, the context of the films that she wants to make, for example. But there are other examples, too. Maybe she wants to make, as, a, as she points out, like an action film. Or maybe she wants to make a story about about uh, uh, weightlifters or something, which is uh, also part of her career when you speak about something like the visions of eight. Um, or maybe she wants to make uh, stories about people that aren't necessarily uh, in and of themselves, quote unquote, feminist, feminist takes, end quote. And so I find this to be a very important aspect of my Zetterling, uh, that she is mindful and respectful of these labels. And she's very mindful and respectful of that uh, a number of her works could be said to be uh, uh, could be said to be engaging with uh, these uh, discussions in these spheres. However, that is not the end of the story, and indeed, the end of the stories or stories plural uh, those stories are being told throughout not just these films, uh, the three films: Loving Couples, Night Games, and um, Other Girls, but they're also being told elsewhere in her filmography, which we'll get a, a sense of in some other supplements as well. So, this is her take. She is a filmmaker. My Zetterling is a filmmaker and artist uh, that handles certain issues or certain topics uh, that are the subject of the films that she has made over the course of her wonderful career. So uh, this is a very fascinating take. Again, uh, an, an example of, of uh, uh, why one should watch this if you haven't already. This is so great. Uh, so please watch this. This is Meeting My, uh, My Zetterling, or Meeting My, excuse me, uh, and it is approximately uh, um, uh, 10 minutes. I think I might have said that the title is Meeting My Zetterling. I think the title is Meeting My. Uh, so let, let me correct the record. The title of this is Meeting My uh, from 1996, approximately 10 minutes. Uh, this is her discussion uh, that was uh, filmed in 1984. So that's the first supplement. But then that's not all because we have another supplement, which is called, uh, which is a discussion, a one-on-one -on -one discussion from 2022 it looks to be in the Criterion offices in New York, I think. And this is with uh, uh, Alicia Malone, great Alicia Malone. And this is a 21-minute discussion with Alicia Malone. And here she uh, is talking in this uh, supplement, which I think is given the title of Introducing My Zetterling. And this is great because uh, here she ha we have Alicia Malone giving us the great uh, background and overview of biography of my Zetterling, her life and her career, uh, and the very touchstone points, including uh, the works in the set, uh, Loving Couples, Night Games, and The Girl. So in this manner, uh, one can say that this discussion by Alicia Malone, as well as the uh, previous uh, uh, interview with my Zetterling, Meeting My, they could be said to be not necessarily exclusively linked to the work loving couples, but they're linked to my Zetterling's life and career overall. But that's still great. That's really great. Um, so it might be maybe worthwhile maybe to consider watching this, these supplements on disc one after you've seen all the films in the set. But uh, I don't think uh, it's going to do one any harm to watch these supplements, say, prior to watching the other two films. So I, I wouldn't worry about that too much. But uh, in any event, uh, this is a great, great supplement and great discussion from Alicia Malone. Uh, she talks about the concerns of the films, specifically these films in the set, this idea of parenthood, independence, she mentioned, female sexuality, uh, and, and also the sense of self-reflection, the sense of self, as well as the engagement with cinematic style and craft. There are some moments that are, are can be said to be very, very experimental, and there's a, 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 one moment that comes to mind immediately. Uh, for example, in, say, the film like The Girls, which is another film that I'm so excited to talk about uh, a little bit later in this video discussion series. Uh, but coming back to this great Alicia Malone discussion, we have uh, this idea of of uh, describing um, Mai Zetterling as an artist who wanted creative control, I think very rightly so, and that over the course of her career as an actor, her uh, early part of her life uh, with the Royal Dramatic Theatre and then uh, uh, finding roles in England and also finding roles in Hollywood, uh, Danny Kaye, etc., uh, there was still this idea of, of uh, Mai Zetterling not feeling the sense of total creative control and that she wanted a sense of creative control. And this also uh, coincided with her 
uh, meeting and uh, marrying and also working with uh, and being with in sort of professional and personal way, David Hughes. And so their collaboration uh, brought about, uh, for instance, the, uh, the ability or the, uh, the uh, sort of uh, one of the points of uh, inspiration, perhaps, uh, to have Mai Zetterling then work in the context of the documentary work that she uh, did for the BBC, and then leading to uh, the war games. And so uh, this has a uh, this has a, uh, I think, a sense of, uh, of uh, as Alicia Malone puts it, this has a sense of being her film school, uh, Mai Zetterling, because she acknowledges that Mai Zetterling, while she wanted to be a filmmaker, she didn't. She uh, admits that she may not necessarily have known everything that there was that needed to be known about being a filmmaker, about being a director, and so this. Uh, groundwork of the documentaries, for example, was a great groundwork, a great place for her to learn. And indeed, she did learn her craft. And while she was learning her craft and did learn her craft, and you can see that in the uh, the polished accomplishment of her works, loving couples, starting with loving couples. I mean, uh, it is so polished. It is so, it's so, it's so professionally done. I, again, I, uh, lack of it, that's a, maybe not a, the best phrase to use. Uh, let me retract that. Let me say instead, it has this confidence. Let me put it that way. It has a confidence that is so, so clear and so uh, undeniable. And it feels so accomplished and that uh, uh, so that uh, I think what Alicia Malone is saying here about how she really wanted to hone her craft and she was able to do so and then some. Uh, in preparation for her, what ended up becoming her first feature-length uh, film, uh, which is Loving Couple. So this is a very great uh, uh, detail that Alicia Mon brings up, as well as uh, then her, uh, Mai Zetterling's uh, concerns and her uh, admiration for uh, Kirsten Scherner, Ines von Kirsten Scherner, which then, of course, is the basis for the works. Uh, the works are the basis for the, the, the script, Loving Couples, and also to how this film had a type of confrontational aspect to it uh, in terms of the uh, frank, uh, for the times, frank depictions of, say, nudity, frank depictions of, uh, you know, Lucia Moon describes it, frank depictions of nudity, frank depictions of homosexuality, frank depictions of of childbirth, uh, and how uh, maybe for the times in particular, uh, the contemporary audiences, this was a very shocking thing indeed. Uh, now with uh, a maybe hindsight or maybe with a sense of, of uh, uh, the ability to watch with nuance, and, the, and uh, Alicia, as Alicia Moon puts it, there's this way of, of uh, recognizing those moments as not being shock value for shock value's sake. And it was never the case of that at all, but rather to really be part of this conversation of these human beings. And this, uh, and for some of the human beings and some of the characters that we meet in, say, loving couples, this is part of their, who they are, or this is one aspect, one of many aspects of who they are. And so... Uh, and I think that's the key. And so the subject or the the focus of of Mai Zetterling's camera and her cinematic philosophy to emphasize the human and to maintain the humane and to present to us uh, the many facets of of the complex and complicated and very uh, spiritual and very uh, thinking and feeling human beings that we see in all of her films, including including the work Loving Couples. I think this is the point, or this is one of many points that can be made. So this is a great conversation, another great primer or introduction uh, into uh, the works of Mai Zetterling. Uh, um, Alicia Malone goes into some of the other uh, films themselves as well, including the ones in the set, Night Games, and then The Girls. And then she also talks, too, about some of the quote-unquote controversy, controversy, excuse me, that was associated with some of the releases. And also... Uh, she talks about how uh, some of her or some of the key uh, points of her career after the release of the girls and um, what she's tried to do in terms of working in different venues such as TV, etc. And also she mentions, Alicia Malone does, too, about the lasting legacy of um, Mai Zetterling. She also mentions, too, where, uh, why it was that maybe Mai Zetterling's works didn't get as much attention as they might have done. Uh, there is a uh, the discussion about the work Dr. Glass, uh, which is a very important uh, discussion. It's a film that actually corresponds to the same exact period of these three films in the, uh, the mid to late 1960s. But uh, Alicia Malone uh, talks about this film and 
and uh, certain reasons why it may uh, not have gotten uh, enough attention that it deserved, as well as other films of her career that uh, may not have gotten enough attention as they uh, really deserved. And this also talks, too, about the behind-the-scenes, uh, some aspects of maybe... Uh, um, uh, sexism or uh, condescending remarks or viewpoints, uh, maybe the critical uh, re reception at the time uh, versus uh, her legacy going forward. And indeed, to Alicia Malone talks then about the lasting legacy of Mai Zetterling and how her name is of uh, singular importance and effect and significance uh, and uh, in terms of uh, the world of, say, um, uh, the world of filmmaking in the 20th century uh, and also in the context of uh, uh, feminism and also in the context of, uh, as Alicia Mom puts it, female filmmakers. Although it's very interesting to take this comment and also re recall what Mai Zetterling says about this uh, point in uh, in some of the comments in the earlier supplement. But it's not to say that there's any inconsistency, but rather there's a sense of this very uh, complex uh, uh, position that Mai Zetterling uh, is in. And uh, it's wonderful for that because uh, she rises to the occasion and then some, uh, uh, as Alicia Malone puts it. And so uh, this is a great, great conversation, a great introduction into the world of Mai Zetterling. And uh, again, for someone like myself, who is very inexperienced when it comes to the works of uh, Mai Zetterling, uh, this is so helpful, so informative, and so brilliantly presented. Uh, I found Alicia Malone's presentation to be brilliant and so comprehensible and easy to access and just filled with so much knowledge and information. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. So please check this out if you can. This is the discussion with Alicia Malone. It's approximately 21 minutes. So that concludes the supplements for disc one. So as I think uh, one might f find, those supplements do speak about loving couples, although they do also talk about Mai Zetterling's career overall, as well as some of the other films that can be found, uh, not just in this set, but also in the context of her career. So um, uh, if you want to watch the supplements after you see Loving Couples, that's okay. If you want to watch the supplements after you've seen all the films in the set, too, that's okay. So that's perfectly fine. Whatever works for you, my dear friends. Also, I should mention that the booklet, this is a great booklet, uh, and it has uh, a number of things. It has some specific write-ups on the films themselves. For, for example, uh, you'll find uh, on pages four and five of the booklet a write-up and some um, a collage artwork about love, loving couples. And then you'll have on the following pages uh, similar treatment with Night Games and the girls. And then after that, we'll have a, a comprehensive essay. And so I'll save my comments on the comprehensive essay, which is great, by the way, uh, because it's talking about the, the films overall. It has specific discussions about each of the films within the essay itself, but it's talking about it overall. So I will save my comments on the essay for the final video in this video discussion series on this channel. But uh, in the meantime, my dear friends, this is a uh, just some comments that I have about this wonderful, wonderful work called Loving Couples. Please, please check this out if you haven't already. It's so worthwhile. And also the, the supplements on this disc one are so worthwhile indeed. Uh, not just an introduction to this great artist, Zetterling, but also uh, the presentation of this very compelling and uh, drama-filled and so moving and a very engaging work that is loving couples all right my dear friends so that's it for now and so until we meet again please be happy and healthy and well and please keep on watching a lot of great 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 movies including loving couples so until the next video my dear friends stay strong stay safe and cheers mm -hmm.